This video was brought to you by a better planner, Ken Power, Marcus Biel, Stormberg, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? We are now at Ayonti Dal, Soko K Dal, and behind me here you see Jeep Avenger. This is the first electric Jeep, and we're gonna do a range test. So it's a small and compact car, and you know it has the exact same drivetrain, uh, motor and battery, uh, no, whatever, uh, as uh, the Citroen EC4X I tested recently. So we don't have to test the whole uh, battery. Wait, did I not close? Oh, I didn't. Wait, okay, there we go. Now the charge board is closed. Okay. So we don't have to test everything. We just have to test how uh, the consumption is here. So this time I actually managed to get a car scan up and running. So you can see some numbers here. Uh, state of charge here seems to be the true state of charge. It's 77%. The display says 79%. Uh, we have voltage, some amp and stuff, uh, battery temperature. So here, the OBD port is where it should be, down here, like most other people. But that French car, <laughs> the Citroën, had the OBD port in some hidden place. Supposedly you have to dig it out from somewhere here. I don't know, man. But okay, so yeah, we will drive the normal route. I'll show you it here. Okay, we are, let me see. Oh, navigation. Oh, nice. If we do this, zoop, and then we can click here. Oh, this is the first time I tried. Oh, it feels fairly snappy-ish. Uh, okay, so we will just drive north now and back again and the consumption test and then see how it is. Uh, I suspect that this car might be a bit boxy and also thirsty. Hmm. We are on the moon now, so nice day today, yes, and uh, 13 degrees Celsius outside. And you see, unlike the EC4X we tried, where you have to choose whether you want to see power meter or uh, uh, the trip meter. Here you can see the power meter and the trip meter at the same time, and also quite big battery gauge here, huh? Nice, I like it. And then here we have some settings, uh, stats, whatever, uh, yeah, whether the car is driving or regening, you can also customize this, yeah, so, um, okay, um, we'll just drive now, loop, back and forth, oh, I'm little, just a little bit concerned about the traffic, but okay, we'll try to maintain the 120 kilometers per hour on GPS speed now, and noise level here seems to be okay, yeah, but we have a little bit of headwind, but you can then hear the, the wind noise, hmm, and then suspension feels nice and soft. Yeah, oh, I try to challenge it a bit in the curves. It seems to be tuned, uh, yeah, a little bit both, but you know, it's not a sports car. So, but at least it's comfy. Yeah, I like it. Nice and comfy. And also we have auto steer. Hmm? That seems to work uh, pretty good. And then how is Mjusen today? Oh, the windsock is hanging. Oh, okay, there's a little bit of wind. Yeah, some. Uh, some headwind, wind from the north. Oh shit, left lane huggers. BMW, ah oh, shit. Okay, um, as you can see, the traffic is a bit dense today. Uh, usually it's very quiet here. That's why I chose this route for my test. But it's um, now Sunday afternoon and uh, lane discipline is something that these Norwegian Nissa don't know what is. So just bear that in mind when we look at the result because uh, it's not going to be a clean run. Yeah, um, well, well, well. Okay, the result, 223 watt hour per kilometer. I guess that's expected for a, a boxy but small car like this. Hmm, okay, let's do the 90 test then. Uh, listen to this turn signal sound. <laughs> what the heck is this shit? I mean, if you thought that uh, the turn signal in uh, Polestar is weird, then this one, there's actually some bass in it also. Wait. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, uh, maybe we'll go the same route again. Uh, they are the same uh, one to um, Strandlich, I can see here. Uh, yeah, wait no, no, wait, I have to click here, yeah, okay. Yeah, so Strandlich is over uh, uh, there roughly, yeah, okay. I think that's good. So the temperature went up a little bit. So that should improve the consumption. So yeah, now see here, okay. Yeah, all the stairs doing a good job, you see. It stays centered, yeah, locking in there. All right, so yeah, 
I always use B mode. If there is any B mode available, I of course use B mode because B mode is the most efficient way. Well, actually, you know, I'm just kidding. But some people claim that no, D mode is more efficient. No, no, no. Okay. So yeah, and then um, let me see if I go to the home button here, and then I swipe over to this one. We also have different modes here. You see that. Um, uh, there is a mode button here, drive mode. So if we cycle through the modes, you see that we have sport, uh, normal, eco, sand, wow, mud, snow. Wait, what about the grass? Maybe we can use sand mode, then it says sand up here. <laughs> I'm not sure how that affects the consumption uh, or the driving uh, dynamics, but we'll just uh, stick with normal. Okay, let's check the weight of the car. Front axle, 920, it's front wheel drive, so it should be front heavy. The whole car, 16 zig, wow, that is relatively light for 54 kilowatt hour battery. Okay, let's test the sound system. It has nice details, nice and clear. It doesn't sound muffled, I like it. There is some bass also, I also like that one. And the bass also sounds uh, linear. Okay, next song. I'm gonna check more linearity, but also, yeah. You guys, I should have shut up so you guys can listen. Also, the, the treble sounds well balanced. It's not over sharpened or anything like that. So, uh, in general, the, the stereo system sounds really good, but um, there is a lack in bass. Listen to the guy here with a bright voice. How does he sound? Also here, sounds pleasant. Okay, and now I'm gonna skip a little bit. Here I wanna to listen to a rattling in the doors. Yep, they're rattling somewhere. Maybe from the back. Okay, the last one. Now I listen to some deep bass. Well, check the deepness. And of course I listened to this beforehand. I can tell you that it lacks that, that deep bass below maybe 100 Hertz. Um, this song is perfect for it because it, it goes really deep. Yeah. Um, and also another thing is that when you turn up the volume, you will hear some clipping. That, that, was, that was maximum. Let me skip a little bit here. Okay. Maximum is... Here. So it's almost like when you turn up the volume uh, loud, if you want to play loud, you will suddenly hear that the, uh, the sound doesn't go much, that much louder, but it changes in characteristics because uh, clipping starts occurring in the bass. So uh, if I would rate the system, um, maybe I'll give it a, I'm not sure, maybe a six or a seven or something. I mean, it gets some plus points because it sounds nice and clear and it doesn't have any annoying stuff like that, but it just lacks a little bit in bass. There's some rattling, so that was a minus. And also, well, obviously it doesn't have that punch like the high-end system, but overall it's still nice to listen to. So maybe I'm leaning more towards a seven. So yeah, for like a budget car like this, then that's actually pretty good. Okay, since the weather is so nice and it's Sunday, but wait, let me check something. Oh, look at the merch, look at the merch. Oh, we can deal with the merch. Oh, it even does it better than Tesla. Oh, shit, this game over for Tesla. Okay, anyway, yeah, but it is nice for Sunday driving. I will uh, keep driving. 
um, actually all the way to Rudsögden back again. I want to measure the the distance error. So uh, it was uh, 65 versus 66 kilometer when I did the previous test. But um, uh, when we go longer distance, we will then have uh, less measurement error. And also, silly man, that the car doesn't show you uh, decimals in distance. So yeah, but look at that. So far, so good. 157 watt hour per kilometer. That is, um, yeah, that is. That is okay. I mean, it's not the lowest we've seen, but uh, for a boxy car, I think it's okay. Of course, you see the sticker there in the front there, and the hood. There. That that adds lots of credit. Oh, uh, street cred. Oh yeah. And then I can show here also at the, the temp. Wait, can you see anything? She. Yeah, the battery temperature is 21 degrees Celsius. Yeah, and this one doesn't seem to be uh, correct. Uh, I think we have more than that. As I measured, as, as much as 51 kilowatt hour net capacity from 100% to zero after any losses. Well, I we might as well test what happens if we don't hold the steering wheel. Okay, let me see. Right, keep your hands on the wheel. Okay, we get that message. Then what? All the steering is still active. Okay, it bugs me. Oh, it goes louder. Huh, interesting. Oh shit, it is totally disengaged. Now it's back to ping pong. Oh, that is not good. I, I, I don't understand why some car manifest. I'm holding it. I'm holding it. Okay. Wait, is it disengaged now? She. Wait, what happened to the. Okay, me. Drive assist. Okay, come on. Wanna be okay? I can at least re-engage. It's not like Tesla where it punishes you. Yeah, you lose uh, uh, social score at Tesla, and then you can't use the auto stay. <laughs> uh, okay, well at least here it works. But uh, I still don't get it why it disengages auto stay. You, the, the driver could have a heart attack, and you don't want to just crash because it, the, the user didn't uh, touch the thing with you know. So it should just keep driving and then also minus point is that it did not slow down. So it needs to keep in the lane, slow down, put on the hassle lights and shit like that, or try to wake up the driver. So this system here fails pretty much big time compared to many other systems that are safer in case of this emergency. We are heading back north now and um, a small problem because um, you see, we are 31 kilometers away from Dahl, but <laughs> shit, I have only 18 kilometers range, 5% left. I, I didn't pay attention um, because I was uh, recording a podcast and then I realized, oh shit, I'm going to run out of juice uh, if I try to go back to Dahl. But you know what we're going to do? Okay, uh, because we don't need to test the battery capacity. So I will top up quickly at um, Minnesota and I have to tr just try to add the extra uh, few meters I drive there. And then we go back to Dahl because I still want to measure the distance uh, and the consumption. And the consumption, okay, is going to be affected slightly by the, the quick detour, the pit stop at, uh, at Minnesota. Oh, no, no, yeah. Um, but I mean, still, okay, we still get a pretty good uh, idea because uh, the majority of the trip was still done at 90, you know, 90. Wait, wait, why is it 91? It's supposed to be 92. Shit, I've been driving too slow. The, the test is ruined. No, I'm just kidding, but okay. So let's just try to fix that. <laughs> now I'm getting stuck behind some slow pokes here. Okay, okay. Let's, <laughs> let's stop at Minnesota then. Oh shit, we made it here <laughs> with 2% left in turtle mode. Okay, let's plug it in. Oh, uh, we're charging now, getting 100 kilowatt. And then while we're charging, the car bugs me that uh, we have low battery. Uh, wh wh why? <laughs> uh, okay, anyway, yeah, okay. Fills up quickly at least. Yeah, 5%, okay. 100 kilowatt, battery is at 27 degrees Celsius. All right, uh, so we just have to add, yeah, we see here the distance. We drive an extra distance, we just have to, add. no, what the heck? Why are you bugging me about low battery? Uh, okay, whatever. Well, we're back on the road now. So I charged to around 20%, so that should be plenty to get back to Dahl. And uh, yeah, so, uh, it seems like we drove around 500 meter extra, so I'll just take that in account when I calculate distance. And then, yeah, because I was driving at 91 for the longest time, now it's at 92, I then overcompensate a little bit by going to 95 now towards the end. So I think that should be good enough. Yeah, I mean, not every test is perfect anyway, right? Uh, now we're done with the test. 147 watt hour per kilometer, wow. And then the distance, okay. 
uh, we can say the distance should have been 182.5. So this car, I calculate under report by around 1%. All right, I'm topping up at Ionti now before I go home. Well, you see, okay, the car doesn't show me any charging screen, no charging information whatsoever. So that's a minus, but whatever. We have a car scanner here. You can see that um, we're taking 96 kilowatt at, uh, well, it's, uh, yeah, it's actually 24%. You see 23 there? So that one corresponds now. So yeah, pretty good uh, charging speed for a small battery at least. All right, so compared to the EC4X that has the same drivetrain but a different shape, then of course uh, this Avenger is less efficient. And yeah, uh, but that also means that the range is a little bit lower, but still, uh, I guess, okay. I'm not sure what I should say about this. Uh, I mean, it's still in the category of affordable cars with uh, not the best range. Uh, but I will actually not do 1000 kilometer challenge, but I can estimate it based on the EC4X time and then calculate that this car might consume around 40 kilowatt hour more or 40 watt hour per kilometer more. And then uh, that will be around 35 minutes extra charging time. So according to my calculation, it's going to be 11 hours and 15 minutes. So it's quite accurate based on so many other tests now. Uh, I mean, I can do the test. Of course, I can drive this Avenger 1000 kilometer challenge, but most likely it's going to be a little bit past 11 hours so yeah um, I think that's gonna be it uh, no 1000 kilometer challenge unfortunately but um, I feel like as long as we have the same drivetrain you know the same battery the same charging curve as other cars uh, and also similar size then uh, taking yet another 1000 kilometer challenge might be a bit overkill I should spend time doing something else instead you know but yeah so that's gonna be it for now I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later